This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. I recently let you decide which series of games we were going to cover and platinum next, and well, Far Cry won pretty convincingly. Now I've played every Far Cry game except for Far Cry 6. Yes, even Instincts. But Far Cry 2 and 3 I've always maintained are my personal favourites. And since Far Cry 2's Platinum is impossible with the closure of the multiplayer servers, there's really only one game we could start with. Far Cry 3 developed by Ubisoft Montreal was released in November 2012 and single-handedly changed this series forever. Every game in this series since Far Cry 3 has tried to emulate and recreate that same success. I mean it's because of Far Cry 3 that we have a Far Cry formula since the first three games whilst having their similarities are also wildly different. But with all that being said it's been 12 years since this game was released and I'm not 15 years old anymore. So let's see how the game holds up today while grabbing that sweet platinum trophy. And yes, I was starting with two trophies unlocked from the get-go. I booted this game up last year, played for an hour, popped two story trophies, and moved on for whatever reason. Anyway, we boot up the game and are immediately asked to choose a difficulty. And while my content brain said choose master difficulty, I just beat World at War on Veteran, and I'll be honest, I wanted to relax after that grenade spam hell I just went through. So normal, it was. Why does that sound like something Yoda would say? Regardless, into the game we go and we meet our protagonist, Jason Brody, and his buddies who are on vacation having a grand old time. Until they take an ill-advised skydiving trip where they end up being captured by pirates. It's here we're introduced to one of the greatest villains in all of gaming. Vass, who makes one hell of an entrance as he reveals that he intends on selling all of us into slavery. Obviously, we don't want that, so Jason, with the help of his brother Grant, manages to escape, ready to take on this wild adventure together. <laughs> oh no, I don't think Grant's gonna make it. We mourn for this stranger I just met two minutes ago as we skedaddle away from Vass and his pirates. We end up being saved by Dennis and the Rakiat tribe, and immediately, he knows Jason is a special boy. So we tag along with him to learn the basics of becoming a warrior, like climbing radio towers, hunting animals, foraging for plants, and liberating outposts, which for the trophy Island Liberator, we'll need to do another 33 times. But that's still a ways off, and with our first outpost cleared, we unlock some side missions, and since I'm easily distracted, that's what we did next. For completing our first path of the hunter quest, we unlocked the trophy Bagged and Tagged, which this time just saw us take out some dogs with a shotgun. <gasps> Bagged and Tagged, hey let's go, we got our first trophy. Completing our first wanted dead quest for the trophy In Cold Blood, which we just need to get a kill on a target with our knife. There we go. In Cold Blood! And on the way to our next main mission, we stop by another radio tower. Because there's just something satisfying about doing these, and whilst we don't need all of them, one, seeing the whole map is nice, and two, for the trophy, full bars, we'll need to at least climb nine radio towers. But the reason I bring this up is unlocking this radio tower sets us up to unlock another trophy, Road Trip, for completing our first supply drop quest, and yeah, this didn't go well. Oh, don't yee-haw me out of here, please. We're fine, we're fine. Okay, we're not fine. I can't even, I don't even know where we are. I hit one rock, alright? Let me hit a rock. <laughs> this is going well. This still feels weird. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Road trip. Still getting distracted for whatever reason, I saw a shark swimming around and some would think it was doing so peacefully. But unlike others, I know these guys are the little known land sharks. Hello? Hello! <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, go go home buddy, you're drunk. So realistic. It's, it's crazy how realistic it is. I was threatened, my back was against the wall, and so I took care of business. Hunter hunted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't know that was a trophy. Getting that shark though did get me thinking about upgrading some of my gear. And just by getting a few more animal hides, we unlocked the trophy Artsy Craftsy for crafting five upgrades. 
craft this. Artsy craftsy. Didn't know that was a trophy either. Anyway, enough getting distracted. We're supposed to be finding our friends and lucky for us, our first is just around the corner. It's Daisy. Don't worry, you won't remember any of his friends' names. They could not feel any less important. Daisy is sick, but luckily she's being cared for by the island doctor, Dr. Buscemi. We need to find some mushrooms to help our friends, so after going cave crawling and tripping balls, we find the mushroom and she'll be good as new. And that catches us up on the story trophies I already unlocked before starting. I told you, I did f all. However, this did give me enough XP to earn the trophy inked up for unlocking five skill tattoos inked up. Now as I was exploring the island, just enjoying my time with the game between missions, I did manage to grab a few more random trophies, like this next trophy, Free Fall, which is for falling more than 100 meters and living to tell the tale, which I got when I stumbled across this glider, flew out towards the ocean and just yeeted myself out of it. Hey, free fall. Next was the trophy Jungle Journal for unlocking 50 entries in the Survivor Guide in which you get a new entry every time you get a new weapon, find a new plant or hunt a new animal. And ironically, I unlocked this by narrowly surviving a buffalo attack. Oh, f Hey, tell down now. Jungle Journal, 50 entries in the survival guide. All right, we'll take that. And finally, the trophy Money to Burn for spending $5,000 at the shop, which I got simply because I was getting distracted by goodies every two seconds and was spending my hard earned money on some new weapons. Oh, money to burn. All right, we're getting through this, we're, we're cooking. But back to the story for the next trophy, Worst Date Ever, where we get captured by Vass and he kindly reunites us with our girlfriend Lisa and this other buddy of ours who's not important right now. Vass kindly gives us a shower and some gasoline and lights the whole building on fire, giving us a time crunch to rescue Lisa and get the hell out of here. Worst date ever. As is the usual trend though, after one mission, I'm beat. So I decided to liberate another outpost. And since I finally had some silent gear on hand, I decided to go for the trophy unheard, which is for liberating an outpost without triggering an alarm. Unheard. This outpost ended up unlocking another path of the hunter quest, this time giving me a chance to hunt a rare animal, which we need not only for upgrading our equipment, but also earns us the trophy poacher, as well. Poacher. Hunted skin, a rare animal. Let's go. But enough fooling around, as it was getting late and I still had one easy trophy I could unlock before bed. That being the trophy, one of us for meeting Citra. That's it. One of us. One of us. Now you might be thinking new day, new attitude. Let's focus on the story and then explore the island some more. Yeah, I just can't do that. If something grabs my attention or it's close by, I'm going to do it. That just so happened to be Radio Towers and Outpost, which is where we unlocked our next two trophies. Island Paparazzi for tagging 25 enemies with our camera because it's always good to plan your attack. Oh, Island Paparazzi. And Rebel with a Cause for liberating our third outpost. Rebel with a cause. With what I like to call some of my distractions cash, we unlock the trophy Aftermarket Junkie, which is for buying all weapon attachments and paint jobs for a single weapon. There we go. Aftermarket Junkie. While we're going around fighting enemies and hunting animals, we gotta keep ourselves stocked up on healing items, which is when we unlock the next trophy, Needle Exchange, for crafting 25 syringes. Needle Exchange. I stumbled across some clueless pirates in my adventure, which gave me the idea to go for the trophy Toxophilite for taking out an enemy with our bow from more than 70 meters away. There we go. Toxophilite? I still was stopping by every radio tower I saw, which finally got me to unlock the trophy Full Bars. I feel like a oh, Full Bars. Activate nine radio towers. And for the hell of it, I also decided to go for the trophy improper use for killing an enemy with a repair tool, which I swear is a battlefield trophy as well. There we go, improper use. But finally, after hours of mostly getting distracted, it was time to complete our next story mission for the trophy, Hands Off My Stoner, which is for rescuing Oliver. Another forgettable friend, but he was the other person in the room with us when we found Lisa. Oliver needs our help before he is sold off. So we kid up, 
complete some good old sniper overwatch to let Oliver escape, and one chaotic boat ride later, that's three of our five friends saved. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Hands off my stoner. And next friend we need to save is Keith for the trophy, Retake Wall Street. And this is where we meet Buck. Buck who likes to f Buck wants us to find the same knife Citra is looking for, which takes us on probably the biggest drag in the story so far, as we complete this overblown fetch quest. At least during this we unlocked a trophy called Never Saw It Coming, which is taking out an enemy with a takedown from above with a zipline, glider, or parachute. There we go, never saw it coming! <laughs> Quickly after this we finally get the knife, give it to Buck in exchange for Keith, and well Buck tries to game end us, so we flip the script and game end him instead, keeping the knife and Keith in the process. Ooh, retake Wall Street. That's four out of five friends saved, but it's here Keith drops a bombshell. Our other brother, Riley, the last friend, is dead. This puts Jason on the revenge path and it's time to take out Vass once and for all. Which means we almost immediately get captured by Vass. It's here Vass says the line. Of insanity. He said it! And plunges us into the depths. However, if we manage to survive this, we get the trophy have I told you, which sees us weaponless need to reach this helicopter and escape. Only for the helicopter to crash land and Vass shooting us point blank. And that's Far Cry 3's story. We survived, don't worry. I mean, we're only about halfway through the game. Have I told you? After narrowly escaping with our life, we have unfinished business with Vass. It's time to end his tyranny, as well as completely waste such an incredible villain. How the hell is Vass only in half the goddamn game, man? He's such a compelling villain. Anyway, for doing this, we'll get the trophy taken for granted. Oh boy, was he. Where we storm Vass's compound, get stabbed because of course we do, and after another trip sequence, Vass's time in Far Cry 3 is over. Taken for granted with the picture rip mofo. <laughs> but as I said, the game's not over because now the big bad of the game goes to Hoyt. However, he's on the second island, and to get there, we need to use our newly acquired wingsuit, which will unlock the trophy higher than a kite. Higher than a kite. And next objective is simple, take out Hoyt. And to do so, we need to blend in, which apparently means stealing a disguise and just acting like we normally would. Seriously, why am I even bothering with a disguise at this point? But after successfully doing our undercover work, we do get a meeting with Hoyt who decides to test us by making us interrogate a prisoner. This will unlock the trophy deep cover, but shocker, this is where we find out Riley is very much alive and it's so good to see him. Yeah, so we beat him up and leave him to rot, basically with the hopes we can free him later. Yeah. Deep cover. After all this, it was time to unlock the trophy Poker Knight for taking out Hoyt. He's unaware of our master disguise and think he's about to have a friendly poker night. Sam! My poker winnings! <laughs> yeah, so obviously he saw right through us, I wonder how. But after a quick knife fight, the lackluster second villain that is so unbelievably forgettable is gone. Poker night! With Hoyt taken care of, we save Riley, fly back to reunite with our friends, only they're all gone and Buscemi is dead and we need to return to Citra. The final mission was upon us and for completing it, we would unlock the trophy, What a Trip, where we attend the final ceremony and have to make a difficult choice. We have yet another trip sequence, which I'm not complaining about, I think these are dope. And once we come to, we have to make a choice. Kill our friends and stay Stay on the island with Citra, becoming the warrior we have shown ourselves to be, or save our friends and leave this island and all the bad memories of this journey behind. Decisions, decisions. Of course, I save my friends. Yes, they're forgettable and I barely remember anyone's name, but one, I'm not a horny teenager anymore, okay, I don't need to see pixel bobs, and two, YouTube wouldn't let me show any of it anyway. This is where Dennis goes full simp. Team kills Citra while trying to attack us, and we finally leave this godforsaken island. And that's Far Cry 3's story complete. What a trip.
The story may be done, but we still have a lot to do. Mostly revolving around clearing out the remaining outposts, gathering a good amount of collectibles, and maxing out Jason's sleeve of skill points. With that being said, I worried about none of that and went immediately after the trophy Poker Bully, which is for winning a total of $1,500 in poker. Now, I suck at poker, so there's no strategy for me. It's just simply go all in and try not to go bankrupt before we get the trophy. There we go, Poker Bully. With our gambling fun out the way, I also went for another miscellaneous trophy, Fearless or Stupid, which is for simply diving more than 60 meters into the depths of the ocean. There we go, Fearless or Stupid. With those two trophies out the way though, my focus was for now mainly on clearing all the outposts on the map because that's how I could quickly grab the remaining three combat trophies. The trophy Heartless Pyro is for taking out 50 enemies with the flamethrower and this had been something I'd been working on since the iconic mission that I can show but you can't hear. The flamethrower stinks but if you chip away at this one over time in the story you can get it without hating yourself too much. <laughs> Heartless Pyro! Ooh, I can get rid of this stupid flamethrower. Rock Always Wins was the next trophy on the chopping block, and this one feels very bugged to me. All we need to do is distract 25 enemies with rocks. Something I felt I did during the story and after several outposts, but finally it decided to you pop. Still like horror games, just <gasps> Rock always wins! Let's go! Buggy bastard. And finally, Love the Boom, which is unlocked for taking out four enemies with one explosion. For whatever reason, again, I didn't have much luck with this in the story, but if you set off an alarm at the outpost, more than likely the reinforcements will come in fours by vehicle. There we go, love the boom. Now, all we really had left was to clean up the remaining outposts, as well as go for the collectible trophies, in Memory to Spare for collecting all 20 memory cards, Dead Letters for collecting all 20 letters of the lost, and Archaeology 101, which is collecting 60 of the 120 relics. I'd already found 30 relics in my time so far, which let me grab the trophy, The Good Stuff, for crafting a special syringe. There we go, the good stuff. While going for the outposts, I managed to unlock every skill in the game. Fully inked. And not long after that, cleared all 34 outposts on the map. Island Liberator. Now it was just the collectibles, and very much like a lot of games, these are just here to pick up for the sake of trophies, not much else to them. The memory cards were the first collectible off the board since they're all at fast travel points. Memory to spare. The letters didn't take long after that. Dead letters. And then it just came down to the relics. Now these do seem pretty pointless and at least it's only half of the 120 we need to grab, but this takes a while, especially when some of them are in such awkward spots. But with some picking and choosing, I finally grabbed number 60, leaving just one trophy remaining. Archaeology 101. Thank God we don't have to find all 120. <laughs> Say hi to the internet for finding the lost Hollywood star who can be seen on the cover of the game. And when I spotted him, the trophy popped along with the platinum and our time with Far Cry 3 had come to an end. He's here. Say hi to the internet. And Hello. mastered I'm the under jungle. The water. Thanks. Please help me. <laughs> too much raining. Too much sound effects. <laughs> oh my lordy. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below which Far Cry game you want to see get platinum next. Go check out my Twitch if you want to see these platinum journeys live. Shout out to the channel members and Twitch subscribers for that extra level of support. And special thanks to the members of the Bear Club, GNT Puppy, Nugget, Dark Wolf, Daniel Fitzgerald, Scott Unwin, Steel Vanguard, NPO Crusader, and Lug Knights. Thank you all, and I'll catch you in the next one.